Mail carriers have a daily cycle of delivering mail, but one thing that has become common for one mailbox in Fort Stockton, they're not just getting letters, but someone keeps putting kittens inside the mailbox. The Lucky Two Times Animal Sanctuary has run into this problem more than once. News West 9's Marcus Risen has a story and the warning from the executive director. Mailboxes are for mail. It's in the name. Unfortunately for this animal sanctuary in Fort Stockton, they've received items that are much too cute to be put in a mailbox. It's like Stinky here. And this kitten was put in our mailbox this morning at about 10 o'clock this morning when I came to check the mail. He was in there. A place no animal, let alone a newborn kitten, should ever be. And this isn't the first time Lucky Two Times Executive Director Michael Luna has opened his mailbox to an adorable but unexpected guest. Here lately, every month, it's been going on since inflation, since people can't afford to take care of animals. A lot of times we'll get phone calls of people asking for help. And right now with the overpopulation and lack of donations, it's real hard for us to say yes. So lately, oftentimes we've been finding them in the mailbox. Stinky was lucky enough to be relatively healthy when Luna found him, but unfortunately others haven't been as lucky. We found one last week or two weeks ago and the one that we uh, tried to save passed away last week. Um, it's either that or just leave them on the side of the road or, or somewhere, you know, and it's gonna end up dying. So to help their conscience and help them feel better, they do it by, you know, they think they're doing a good deed, when in fact they're not, because the mailboxes get hot, they will die. Um, there's been times where I have opened the mailbox and I've had dead kittens in there. Not only would a lack of airspace harm the kitten, it's also a federal crime. They shouldn't do it anyway. They should always hand an animal over to another person. But for every person who does a bad thing, there's always another person who's doing a good thing. It's sad and disheartening that this happens, but how am I gonna say no to, no to this? And there's other options for people who think they can't help the animal. We have programs that help low-income families out to buy feed for their animals, or, or, or dry cat food or dry dog food. We have wet, we have a pantry. They can come up here and say, hey, I need cat food. And we'll help them out. We have no problem. If that's gonna help you keep your animal and keep you from dumping it, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Not only are they here for the kittens, they're also helping other animals out as well, as the sanctuary helps out animals with pending court cases, from dogs to cats, to horses to ducks. And they can't do this alone. The main thing that we need is funding. Funding, funding, funding is what we need so that we can grow and we can help provide resources for the community to prevent stuff like this from happening. Mainly this is happening because we don't have resources to provide them. If people could get their animals fixed, if, if people could get their animals vaccinated, uh, like we're doing to advocate and provide that service for them, then we, it would be so much better for them. Because I think a lot, of, a lot of this is going on because people feel they have no other choice. But they do have a choice, and it's a choice that could land you one of the most adorable kittens you'll ever see. Because Stinky, along with his siblings who were found later, have their whole lives to live. And no amount of that life should ever be spent inside of a mailbox. In Fort Stockton, I'm Marcus Risen.